Hello! Hi! Hopefully live. Wow! We just screeched right in on two wheels. Oh, mercy. We were going 25 miles an hour on the highway to get home. <laughs> All right, guys. Today we are making out of volume one breakfast puffs with baking mix, also known as Bisquick. Volume one gluten free, dairy free, and our financial planner 60. You heard me right, 60% off. We have just over a week left before we shut down the shop to move. She was going crazy. I couldn't stop her. <laughs> I'm like, I do not want to lift these books onto that truck. She's like those furniture people. They're like, we're slashing prices. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. I can't think of what else they say. <laughs> well, supplies last. Okay, this really is while well supplies last. So 60% off. If you guys haven't got your Christmas presents, go for them. Dining on a Dime Volume 1, our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. If you guys want to try a super good gluten-free cookbook, this one is for you. It's actually food that tastes good and is easy to make. Amen. And then our financial planner right here which will not be reprinted. <clears throat> and as a person who I don't think needs to eat gluten-free, I still find that I like some of the recipes better. Yeah, he really likes some of the recipes. All right, volume one, page 62. So if you have volume one, page 62, right there. Now, we're going to get two cups of baking mix. Now, I am using our favorite pancake mix right here. This is our favorite one. You can use just regular Bisquick or you can use the store brand baking mix. You can use homemade baking mix, which also we have the recipe on page 58 right here to make your own homemade baking mix. And honestly, for years and years and years, I just made my homemade, I just made my baking mix homemade. But then the crusties had this family size and it wasn't much more than making my own. So I just started doing that then. All right, we have our baking mix in here. The recipe is in the description below. I'm adding my sugar and I'm not gonna put in nutmeg because I can't find it. <laughs> and then um, start your oven, I forgot to start my oven. Okay, and then um, let's see, what do we have in here? Bacon mix, sugar, nutmeg, okay, my butter or margarine, whichever you want, all I have left in the freezer is butter right now and we're using it up. And we usually don't use that huge of a blob of butter. Yeah, usually I uh, usually I bake with margarine or shortening just because it's so much cheaper. So I don't waste money on butter for baking. And then milk, okay? And this is some of my emergency stash milk, so we're using that up too. Um so that we don't have to move it. This box milk here, if you guys need a good emergency uh, stash, this box milk I got at Dollar Tree and it seems to be really good. We really like it. So there's greasy on the floor. Did you guys drop butter from popcorn on the floor or something? That would um, be Jack. I don't know, that would be Jack. So that, we don't know. Oh, everybody's blaming Jack, huh? Poor Jack. All right, and then you just mix this all together, just like so. See, just get it all mixed up. Now it is gonna be thick, it's like a muffin, okay? Should I zoom in? Why am I being blamed? Did you drop, <laughs> did you drop butter on the floor? Yeah, 80% sure it's in. Where? I don't know, it's really slick right here. Mom's gonna go sliding in and land in the sink. I might have. I was buttering my bread earlier today. Oh, I bet that's what it is. 
Okay. I don't remember. Okay, I didn't have my butter soft enough. I, I thought it was hot enough in here that it was soft enough. I should have softened it just a little bit more. But that's okay. We'll just adapt and overcome because that's what we do around here. Okay, there we go. Now just get this all mixed up. No biggie. Now, <laughs> you gotta love it. So oh. I picked this recipe and I totally forgot that I had, I had already packed my mini muffin tins. So <laughs> we're gonna be making these big muffins big puffs instead of little puffs, okay? Um, so we're just adapting and overcoming once again because, okay, I'm gonna have to clip this up. I'm gonna go. Yep, it's butter. Okay. <laughs> just a second, guys. I gotta clean up butter that's smushed all over the floor before I go sliding. Yeah, fall on my face and then we won't catch it on YouTube and then we won't be on America's Funniest Home Videos. And so then, you know, what a waste of a good fall that would be. <laughs> yes. Okay, there we go. Now. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to put these in my muffin tin. Now, this. No, I don't need this tin will make less bigger muffins, of course, than, excuse me, sorry, thank you. It'll make less of the bigger muffins, of course, than the mini muffins. So don't, so just divide it up as evenly as you can. All right, did you have a question? Oh, there were just a lot of general questions about how we're doing and, oh, and okay. packing and all that. Well, we can get that as soon as I get these in the oven here. And we have a surprise that came from FedEx today. We are super excited. We are super excited. Okay. Getting all this in. So it looks like it's going to make about nine or ten big ones. And... Just put it all in. Um, now, you probably could get by. Like, if you don't have butter or margarine, you could probably get by without using the butter or margarine because the baking mix already has oil in it. Whoa, did not mean to put that much in there. Has the shortening already in it. But the butter does add a little bit more flavor. Um, the butter or margarine adds a little bit more, you know, buttery flavor there. <clears throat> and, oh crud, let's see, probably should have gotten 12 out of these, but I did it. There we go. Now. We're going to throw these in the oven at 400 degrees. Now, if you're doing the mini ones, it's 10 minutes. If you're doing the big ones, it's 20 minutes, okay? All right. There we go. Should have been. I did it a little bit more evenly, but that's okay. And... Then what we're going to do is, in just a minute, we're going to melt some butter, and then we will uh, dip these in butter and then cinnamon and sugar, and oh man, they are so yummy. So, so yummy. Get a little bit more butter here. And then you will have your breakfast puffs or muffins if you don't have your mini thing. All right. Yes, dear. Let's discuss our lives at the moment. What did you say? Okay, so David Cooper in Kansas said... David Cooper needs to be banned. 
He is the worst it writer might, in the whole wide world. It might actually be Shayla Cooper. <laughs> oh, well, uh, she's okay. I, I'm only kidding. Sure. That's my brother. There you was guys. a request to send a gluten-free book back. Oh, you okay. To move your mom. I have a request to send a gluten-free book back. Progress. When Mike and the boys go back next week to load up mom stuff. By the way, guys, in case you're joining us late, real quick, Dining on Dying Volume 1 on page 62 is the recipe we're doing today. 60% off, guys. We knocked it up to 60% off. We're not going any lower. 60% off. We weren't going to go lower than 50, but we still have about 1,000 gluten freeze left. So we were like, you know what? Let's just bump it down and see. Because I know people are hesitant, especially gluten-free cooking. People are hesitant to try a new cookbook. Because I'll be honest, I've been gluten-free for 12 years. And a lot of gluten-free recipes are nasty. Believe me, that's why I wrote this. Because it's actually gluten-free food that tastes good and is easy to make. So that's why I did it. So 60% off, guys, if you've got Christmas presents or if you have a brother or sister-in-law who just wants a copy of it, <laughs> we have one. So DC says, LOL, she can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> and also says, what is the shelf life of the milk? Did you say that doesn't need to be refrigerated before you open it? Uh -uh. It's, well, so I got this like six months ago and it expires the end of the year. So about a year, year and a half. That's not too bad. So, and look what I got in the mail before I show our big surprise. What? Mary. Oh. Yeah. Mary Miller sent me fresh tea for our new home. From Ireland. She knew that I love Irish tea. Wow. I have to say of all the teas I had, Ireland and England were the best. They were the best. So nice. thank you, Mary. Thank you. Very cool. Super very, very excited. Cool. I'm not going to even open it until we get there because I'm just going to wait and have me a nice little cuppa on our new deck. You should have seen her with the tea when we were in North Yorkshire, especially and in Ireland. And we, should, we should have gone to that store in Dingle, the cup on, yeah. on cup and tea. Yeah. <laughs> it was on a, our new deck with the deer walking by as they're devouring my plants. <laughs> All right, so we got this package today from FedEx, and this is how it was sitting on our driveway. Oh my! So <laughs> clearly there Burning was a our porch. Our there porch. was a slight oh. malfunction. I know what that is. So there was a slight was malfunction. A slight, uh, malfunction. Although it does appear that the, the cargo is still in the box, so that's good at least. <laughs> it came all the way from. South Korea, and we are super, super excited. So let's open this puppy up and show everybody what we have. Before, oh dear, Amy is on and says, hello, this is Amy, and I met Tara at her garage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hello, Amy. So it was hilarious. So we had a garage sale this weekend. I had a garage sale this weekend, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and the guys helped me carry it out, but they boycotted sitting out there. They were like, this is crazy. And honestly, it wasn't really worth it. I mean, we got rid of about half the stuff, but about halfway through, Amy walks up and she said, oh, I've been watching you for two years. And apparently she drove about an hour to come to our garage sale. And she just drove around me until she found our house. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great to meet you. So <laughs> well, Crazy Cat Lady, Customs sometimes does open our stuff, but usually. Usually they don't open this it looks this like way. somebody shot it with a cannonball. <laughs> so. But it looks like. It maybe survives. All right, here we go. So you have to tell backstory on why the change. So, <laughs> all right. Well, it's a little worse for the wear. Look at this. <laughs> but you should wrap it around the book and make sure it looks right. This is the new cover for volume two. The color there look better. Oh, actually, I really don't. That's not quite what I was thinking. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we'll just leave it. I think it looks good. You like it? Yeah. 
Oh, I was hoping more tannish. Okay, well, this is the new cover for the Man, volume good. two. What do you mean? We changed, we slightly lightened the color of the recipe card. So, here's <laughs> oh, what we did. Nice. It looks good. We changed the cover of volume two because people were totally confused that volume one and volume two were the same book. So, I thought if we just said volume one and volume two, that would be explanation enough, but apparently people don't understand that I think it's because people don't use encyclopedias anymore. You mean that people don't understand people what volumes zero, mean? So. Well, also though, people process now because of internet stuff visually a lot more than anything else, and so just glancing at it, they see red and red. So I think I guess so. We changed the cover to volume two to blue, and this is the new proof right here. Uncle Dave says dibs on the first copy of the new cover. Uncle Dave dibs on the first copy of the new. Did you see how our book came arrived? <laughs> so this is our new proof that we have to go through. So they send us a pr an actual printed proof. Huh? Everything printed on the printing press where the books will be printed, and then we look through it all and look for any kind of errors or mistakes. And then if we find any, then we make changes and upload the changes to that. Yeah. So here's the new proof that we got to go through. I would say this printer is probably the best printer we've ever worked with. Yeah. Although the other day we found, we were going through things to get rid of, and I found the invoice from the first printing of Not Just Beans, and I did not have the heart to throw it away. That was our first book that we printed 21 years was it ago, Printcraft? 22 years ago. Was huh? Printcraft the company? Yeah. We should see if we have still, a box downstairs. We should see if they're still in business and say, "Hey, remember that book yeah. you printed for us?" We have a box that we have the first box that they came in that mom when she came oh. back last month, she brought some of her stuff and her stuff was still in one of the boxes. <laughs> I've seen it. From I mean, Idaho. I've seen her carrying stuff around with the 22 boxes. years ago. So, yeah. Um yeah. Um, by the way, guys, several people were saying they ordered either volume one or gluten free or the financial planner. It's only until supplies last or July 11th. Okay. July 12th, the store is being shut down and we are not going to be shipping anything. You can still order, but nothing will be shipped. We also have a few of the free Bibles left. So if you cannot afford a Bible, we also have about 20 Bibles left, I think. So that if you can't afford one, we are happy to send you one, but we still have some of those. So, all right, let's get to A lot of people questions. saying they like the new cover. You like the so, new yeah. cover? So let's see, what will it look like? Will it look good? Oh, can you refresh? See, what we usually do is, Oh, sorry. I, I, Let's see. What does it look like? Hold on. I'm behind on. Usually, what I do to make sure that the border is right is I actually wrap it around an existing oh, yeah. copy of the book. <laughs> wrap this around so we can see how it's going to look. Well, it'd be closer to, to gluten free, I think. Um, so, it's been an interesting week. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> actually, oh, what Tar what yeah. Tar didn't mention the day that. Um, the day that she was doing the garage sale, the rest of us went and saw Ellie fly. Yes. We had never seen her do that before. So They had a fly-in, the Bloom Festival in Frederick, Colorado here, and she didn't think she was going to get to fly, and she's doing paramotoring, a mother's worst nightmare. And it's not that bad. <laughs> she's doing paramotoring, and so she got to go fly with the hot air balloons and was super excited. She was super, super excited to go do that. Um, Tammy, I have volume one, volume two already. Will the new one you are showing now be different inside no, or just the cover? Just it's the cover. just the cover yeah. because a lot of people, yeah. we were getting a lot of questions about their volume one and volume two were the same book. Yeah. So Tara yeah. thought if they were different colors, yeah, people yeah. would recognize more easily that they're not the same book. Yeah. So. So she, so they went to go watch her do that while I was having the garage sale. We didn't know she was going to be flying or wouldn't have done the garage sale, but she, uh, 
uh, decided at the last minute to go ahead and try and fly in it, and she did. She was super excited. And um, in the balloon festival, you yeah, said? yeah. And the garage sale went really well. I sold about two hundred dollars worth of stuff, which isn't spectacular, but. And honestly, if it was a non-moving time, I wouldn't have probably done it. It really wasn't worth the headache of hauling everything out and getting it all set up. And then it started to rain. So we had to bring it all in at 11 o'clock and quit at 11 o'clock. I mean, Colorado gets 20 days of rain a year and it picked garage sale day. But anyway, so we got about half the stuff sold, which is good. Man, it's we nice were not to shocked. Have to haul it away ourselves. Well, I'll be honest, I was pretty shocked. We've been hauling stuff away in the trash and to the thrift store and to the dump. And we still had the entire driveway. Amy will attest, we still had the entire driveway full of stuff. Well, and also you had sold a bunch of stuff on Facebook Marketplace in addition to all those other things you said. I sold three thousand dollars worth of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. So the house is running leaner now. It is still hoping we can get it in there. Well, I just have a, I have a quandary right now. I really, I, I shouldn't have gone furniture shopping. I went furniture shopping with mom. Should not have done that before I moved. And I found a charcoal gray couch that I absolutely fell in love with. Now you guys know 95% of the furniture I buy is used. We have new mattresses and a new couch, but everything else is used that I just refurbish or we just use it like it is. So I'm not a big furniture shopper. So I'm justifying myself here. See, see how I'm justifying this? <laughs> not listening. But I, I found the most gorgeous dark charcoal gray that would go really well with my new black chairs, couch, at American Furniture Warehouse. Maybe they would do a sponsored video. Uh, <laughs> and But our couch is only like two years old right now. So it's not in bad shape, but it just doesn't really match the new house really well. But our van died. And I mean, it died. And then our truck, is in the shop and we don't know if it's going to need six hundred dollars worth of work or six thousand dollars worth of work it's an old 78 ford pickup the yellow one you guys always see i should get the phone in case they call they're supposed to be working on it right now yeah they're supposed to be working on it right now we're hoping they get it done before we move and the engine and the transmission both have major leaking issues and first estimate was going to be six to eight thousand dollars then the next estimate was going to be six to seven hundred dollars so now we don't know what it's going to be. And so I can't really justify buying a new couch when we've got to get a new car and we've got to put repairs into the truck. But that couch was beautiful. I just loved it. But we need a new car. So I'm not getting a new couch right now. But I'm sighing. Have you guys gone car shopping lately? Oh, my word. Cars are absolutely berserk. They're absolutely berserk. So the van died. So I've been car shopping, car shopping. Yesterday morning at four o'clock in the morning, I think, Mike woke up and he saw he had a text and it said, I wrecked my car and it's not drivable. I took yours <laughs> so from BJ. We were like, okay. <laughs> So now we're down to one car with four drivers. <laughs> so we're like, all right, we can do this. We can do this. So BJ, yesterday, he works in Estes Park, uh, the late shift. So he drives home at midnight. And uh, he hit at 1 o'clock in the morning. He hit the world's fattest raccoon. I mean, he said he thought it was like 100 pounds. So I don't know. This big, maybe? Is that how big is a 100-pound raccoon? Oh, it looked a lot big. I mean, it, looked, it was huge. His dash cam it looked, caught it. It looked like about the size of a yoga ball. It was huge. You think it was that big? Oh, yeah. He, uh, he, a yoga he, ball? You think it was this big? 
No, it was tall. It was tall. It was like as tall as well. The, it was tall as the bump. I mean, the top of the, the bumper. Good, yeah. Oh. You got your video? Can we show our it viewers was, your your raccoon? Oh, you're on the phone. Well, he, oh, um, so he has a dash cam, and um, you could see it just came out so fast. There was nothing, it was a suicidal raccoon. Nothing he could do, and the car itself usually makes an effort to dodge things, but it didn't. Because it was just too fast. It launched the car. But yeah, he just said it pushed the whole car. <laughs> broke the steering. How tall do you think it was? Dad thinks it was as big as a yoga ball. Uh, well, so when we went to, we went back to check and make sure it wasn't like a person. <laughs> <laughs> we went back to make sure it wasn't a person. Oh my goodness. And it was probably about this long. This long? It was like probably that tall. Holy cow. It looked like a giant like hog. <sighs> well, so this wouldn't be such an issue, except that right now we're getting a loan for the house. And even though we have a 75% down on the house, the bank is being a real pain in the butt. I'm about ready to lose my patience. And they're like, you can't buy anything. No big purchases. Well, they're already having a cow over us buying the books. They're like, what's this? It's like a business expense. And then we had to pay a, a substantial amount in taxes because of the way it landed this year. Well, and also, so for COVID reasons, the um, accountant didn't have to send us the taxes till May, but we also have to pay advanced tax on next year, each year. So I had to, we had to pay our regular taxes and then advanced tax. And then three weeks later, another quarter of advanced tax. So explaining that to them, because being self-employed is a lot different than having a regular job. And so the people that work at the bank don't seem to understand, like, why are you paying this much in taxes? Like, because this is all the taxes for the year plus two quarters of next year. And so I think that's where, so. So it wouldn't be at a least big you're not deal. Asking so far, previously on our previous, house they asked what twenty dollars was that we would had moved from one account to another so what was that i don't know um and so it wouldn't be a big deal to because we have we have the money to buy a car but oh it's probably good um but the bank if it um sees us doing another huge chunk of change they're going to be like well what's all that for so that's part that's the second reason aside from not wanting to move them why we put the books on 60 percent off right now so that we have extra cash in the bank and then they can just unwatch some things from their posterior and take a chill pill Neither one of us is very fond of bureaucracy, although I told Tara the moment we decided to get a house, I said, you know, if we do this, we're going to have I to put know. up with the bureaucracy <laughs> through the process. I still but. don't have patience, though. All right, there you go. Just dip it in, in butter and dip it in cinnamon and sugar, and that's it, guys. You made those kind of lovelies? Yes. You guys love them. Kathleen says Wyoming 4x4 pickup would be my choice. You know, it seems like a lot of people agree with you because yeah. there are a lot of them up there for sure. Yeah. And we may eventually get Well, and we like are that. looking at an SUV. I've never had an SUV. And we are looking at an SUV just for deer reasons because, you know, deer hit it, hitage up there. Is that a word? Deer hitage <laughs> is a very common thing. Deer strikes. That's and just deer strikes. Is deer strikes? Well, is that bird worth? strikes on aircraft, so. Is it? Actually, it's but, interesting. But tell them about the insurance. I was going to say the insurance sort of um, confirmed our our experience with driving. The insurance up there is one third of the price that it is for us here in Colorado. We're paying $900 for our <clears throat> one 20, 20 year old Toyota Camry. Our 20 year old Toyota Camry. We're paying $900. And it's going to be $300 up there. That is a significant difference. So, And I think, did you ask him why? I think you asked him why, right? Why he said, I thought you asked him why, and he said there just aren't as many crazy yeah. drivers in Wyoming. 
Yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. So anyway, so we've had an interesting week in the middle of moving and all of this. And Ellie is moving out Friday. So we've been doing some stuff to get her ready. We found her a free couch, which actually, if she wasn't taking it, I would take it to the new house. My neighbor had a leather couch that she was getting rid of, a really nice black leather couch. And um, she saw that, and so I texted my neighbor and I said, how much are you selling your couch for? She said, well, actually I can't sell it, so I'm giving it away for free. I said, but we are on our way to pick it up now. And we're walking it across the driveway. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> so, She's getting all prepared. Her and BJ are staying here after we move. So that will be nice for them. I'm sure they will have a bonding moment, don't you think? Yes. Who? BJ and Ellie. <laughs> I don't we're know. Gone. I, I'm not sure. I would say yes. They do the twin thing sometimes, but then other times they're like, nah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So, Ms. T, yes, she said, would it be okay. cheaper to car shop in Kansas when you go to get Jill? Ye yes, might. and I am going to look for when they go back, and if we find one, then uh, what we might do is sell mom's car, I don't know if she wants to, and then have her drive that one, and then get her something new when she moves up there. Kathleen, some vehicles are deer magnets. You're yeah. what? One thing we've realized is the the road we oh, take yeah. is Can you start all covered again? in antelopes. Okay, so have BJ's going to gonna show you this this video. So we don't like to drive it at night. Yeah. How do I? Just hold it up to the camera. Just the yeah. Camera? Just hold it up to the camera. Wait, is graphic this? warning. Graphic warning. Yeah, you you're about to watch anything. it. You don't see anything. I know what happened. But you, you know, know it's a suicidal raccoon. raccoon. Look at that. A boom right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Poor thing. So can you stop it right before it hits the car and let's see if we can see how big it is? So oh, one part. There you go. Oh yeah, just do that one. Um, I'm curious to see if it if the picture shows how big it is. The weird thing is it's the second time BJ's had an encounter with a raccoon in the night. But he had a car that was a lot less sturdy before. So. And it didn't get damaged nearly as much as this one. Didn't let mom see it. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me read. Hold it for like five seconds or something. That was about half the length of my car. Half the length of your <laughs> car? The, Seriously? The width of my car I'm at. No. Oh, no. let me see. No way. Poor thing. It can't be that big. Wow. I'm always taking up like a third of the lane. Yeah, he's taking up like a third of the line. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. He's not even fully stretched out. He's like halfway through a step. Good grief. <laughs> oh, wait, Kara. What's what's Kara say? Hold on. Oops. I have a Honda Pilot. It's I was wondering about those. Should I get a oh BJ says I shouldn't <clears throat> get a what, Honda what, Pilot. What, what? But we don't want a car that has a lot of repairs. So we're looking at Toyotas because our Toyotas have always been really good so ellie what do you think of the muffins are they delicious she's stuffing her face with muffins she just walked in no work. he's not pleased about hitting it he's just oh no he's just stating that um his car is pretty much destroyed which yeah, is they think he may have totaled it they're looking at it now so yeah the tow truck driver and the mechanic are both like yeah it's Probably total. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I didn't hear the, the guy at the actual collision center's opinion because the tow company took like three and a half hours past what they said it would take them. So they towed it to the wrong place. So then he had to have it towed 30 miles to another place. And yeah. So anyway. Uh, Ariana, we are... This that was the one the tar showed is a reprinting of Dining on a Dime two. Yes. And we're also about to reprint Dining on a Dime one for after we get to there. I mean there'll be a couple of months yeah. gap where we won't probably have any. Uh, but since we're trying to run out of books now, and we're then, estimating September first. And then we're not sure when, but we 
do plan to do another, an entirely new book, but it's probably been delayed yeah. somewhat because Trying of this to work movie. On that. Well, I, I was going to write a five ingredient book and it's just been delayed because of the moving thing. I just can't do it all. That's partly guys. I got a new video up yesterday, but I'm really sorry. I just can't do, I just can't do it all. So I can't get the videos on. Um, yeah. Kensky also loves my 2010 Toyota. Honda Pilot. Only money she spent is tires. Well, that's good. Yeah, see, we, we've we kind of been leaning heavily towards Toyotas because we used to have all different kinds of cars and none of them seemed to last that long. And then we've had um, several Camrys in the family and they just seem to go yeah. and not need a whole lot mm -hmm. and still do really well. Although we did have a Honda once because we heard Hondas were good also, but it was a really old one that wasn't in that great of shape. Uh, and it, but it, it we did didn't the job. spend a lot of money fixing it. Though. No, and it did the job while we had it, but because it wasn't in that great shape, we eventually sold it. And bought, yeah. Was that before the Camry? We yeah. sold it to buy yeah. the Camry. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have gluten free left, 60% off. Now, I will tell you, we have not looked since we made the announcement on our newsletter. If you guys aren't on our newsletter, go to Living on a Diamond, sign up for it because that's where we announce stuff first. Mm -hmm. But I haven't checked to see how many we have left since we announced it on our newsletter. 60% off. Volume 1 at 1 o'clock, I had 400 copies of Volume 1 and 1,000 copies of Gluten-Free left. 60% off. And then I had 400 copies of the Financial Planner, which were not reprinting. So... Under the median, I think I may have one of the original Dining on Dime Volume 1. It's a three-ring bound, and I think Tara's brother did the artwork. Oh, yeah. If, if it's... Cartoon drawings. Yeah. Yes. Tar's cool. brother did that. It was one of the originals. Oh, that's pretty nifty. Is it the color one or the black and white one? Actually, <laughs> the very first one we did in those days. Oh, uh, I packed them. I it was a them. dramatically more expensive to print them in color, but we could do like, was it two color? Or, yeah. So we ended up doing like black and red and then the white paper. <laughs> that so, was the original, very original. So one. this book here costs the same price as the original <clears> one cost. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's how much printing costs have changed over the years. Um, <laughs> so we had 11 muffins and we have five left. So I think the muffins were a hit, I would say. I haven't made these forever. I used to make them all the time and I haven't made them forever. Now we're asking for knives to put butter. Oops. So the color, not the stains, with the, the, the drawings was the second printing. Because the first one didn't sell very well. Of course, at the time we didn't have a lot of money and we were just trying to, you know, they say in business, uh, do it now and revise later rather than never get it done because you're trying to make it perfect. So we came out with one and it wasn't selling as fast as we would like. And uh, eventually, we, uh, eventually we asked people their opinion about the drawings and boy, did they <laughs> brutally share the truth. Yeah, they said I looked drunk. <laughs> they said that the drawing of Tara- It was a joke, but- Well, <laughs> the character had a fire framing, a frying pan that was on fire and big slippers and- She was cross-eyed. Cross-eyed and- <laughs> People thought the slippers were backwards and that she looked drunk because she was cross -eyed. They just like totally laid it out. We're like, okay, we need to change the cover. So uh, we are moving to Wyoming. We're not saying where yet. We're going to do a surprise or not a surprise, but a reveal video when we get there. We leave two weeks from today. We leave two weeks from today. We close. Bye. So... This is our second to the last show. And then next week will be our last show in this kitchen. And we. Yes, under media, under the media, that is a classic. And I personally liked the color one better, even though it was the second printing. It, it just looked a lot classier yeah. than the first one. But yeah. And obviously we looked inside one the other day and I was thinking about how much simpler the, the kind of typesetting was and everything in those days. Yeah. Oh, simple. 
It took 10 minutes to. No, no, no. It wasn't simple doing the pages. process. It's simple in how it looks. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very basic looking. We Although, would hit save. Windows, what, 95? No. Uh, 97? No, it was Windows. No, it wasn't even Windows. Oh, no, it was. It was Windows 3.1 on a. It, we would hit save, and it would take a half an hour to save the file when we did it. It was so, a Windows. P, it was a it was a IBM PC XT computer running Windows 3.1, which is like a 19 late 80s to early 90s computer. Okay, this and, is all the muffins I have left. But we did do things like we did do things like uh, where there were little tips. There was a little tip guy. It was a little <laughs> like animated exclamation point figure that Tara's brother drew and. Yeah, well, I love those. I love those. We found them yesterday going through the file cabinet, dumping stuff. and We didn't dump those. Didn't dump those because I'm like, we have to keep those for posterity. They were just, I thought they were super cute. I really liked them. Jessica said, I think that the first cover reminded me of the newspaper weekend comic strip. Yeah, well, that's yes. what it was supposed to be like. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We actually changed the name uh, under the median because uh, people couldn't understand what not just beans meant. Like, People yeah. would call it just beans or just not beans or yeah. And then some people would say, Well, there aren't any beans in this bean cookbook. <laughs> the the title was supposed to mean you don't have to live on beans to save money on your grocery bill, but nobody got it. Yeah. So and how you know how I got that? You know how I got that title? I bet you don't even know this. I thought you just Dave Ramsey had just come out. He had been out not very long. And he kept telling people, you have to live on beans and rice. You have to live on beans and rice. And every time he would say that, I just wanted to reach through the camera and strangle him. Because back then, we didn't have YouTube or anything. He was on TV. I just wanted to reach through the TV and strangle him. Because I was like, you don't have to live on beans and rice to save money on your grocery bill. And I would holler that every single time he was on there saying, you got to live on beans and rice. Now, all you Dave Ramsey fans, I'm just saying... She doesn't dislike Dave. Just I don't dislike him. I'm just saying, you don't have to live on beans and rice to save money on your grocery bill. Even now, oh dear, it's happening. No, mother, I will just cut the show. <laughs> Mom was quoting. You haven't said it lately. Have Get it together, people. There you go. Mom was quoting a news article how grocery prices are soaring this Fourth of July, and you know what they're soaring to. They said the average family picket picnic is going to go up something like a dollar and thirty-seven cents. The average family picnic? Yeah, the whole picnic is going to be up a dollar and thirty-seven cents. How many people go and spend ten <laughs> times that amount on one coffee? So that kind of stuff, as you guys know, gets me a little riled, just a little, just a little. <laughs> Because you don't have to live on beans and rice to save money on your grocery bill. So that's Victoria why I says, it. Yes, let it out, Tara. Haven't seen you say get it together people in a while. I'm trying to be a kinder, gentler Tara. Wow. Yes, what nice happened? Job. So the tow truck driver told me that he was going to pick the car up at 2 o'clock and have it up there by 3. Yeah. Didn't happen. So I called him and he said, oh, it's going to be another 30 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes goes by, I call him again. Oh, it's going to be another 30 minutes. Yeah. I just did that like four or five times until eventually he was three and a half hours late. Oh, my goodness. And then he calls me for the payment. And he's like, do you want to leave a tip for the tow truck driver today? Like, <gasps> no. no. <laughs> Why would you leave a tip for a tow truck driver that's yeah, three and a half hours late? Well, I, I didn't even know you tipped a tow truck driver. Goodness. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. This tipping is getting out of control. Okay, Ariana says, are we reprinting Dining on a Dime or is it a new volume three? No, it is the same volume two. Oops, I got the wrong book, sorry. It's the same volume two, it's just a new cover because people were getting confused having two red covers with volume one and well, volume two. I do not have a keto book, no, sorry. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Kara, it drives me crazy to see all the traffic in all the fast food restaurants. I don't particularly yeah. care that people are eating there. But what I think is funny is a lot of the fast food restaurants, there'll be 25 cars in line. 
then I'll think, and there'll be nobody. I mean, you can walk in and order inside at the counter. And, and if you get out of the car and walk in, there's nobody in there. And I'm thinking, is it worth sitting in your car for 45 minutes? They wait in line 45 minutes for food that you could cook and clean up in 15 minutes at home. Cook in 15 minutes, clean up in 15 minutes, and you're done. It's crazy. We did another thing on this. I uh, did another video. It's coming out Friday about stupid things that people do to save money that don't actually save money. And yeah. Under the media said, Tara, I tried kinder and gentler one night. My friends thought I was sick. <laughs> you totally get it, don't you? I know. It's yeah. Everybody so, loved the fact that all the hands were reaching in to grab all the muffins. Is, we have is three muff left? two and a half muffins left. Wow. I didn't even get to do the on-camera <laughs> test. Um, so, Teresa, yes, we do have yes. gluten-free books left. Yes. And yes. they're now 60% off. So, yes. in fact, on the gluten-free ones, we were hoping that somebody who has some connection with the gluten-free group would tell them. Yeah, if you guys have any gluten-free books, could you please tell them? Or, I mean, gluten-free channels because... Because um, we, we would love to we would love to get rid of them, but at the same time... Uh, please spread the word. We This is a price we're not going to normally have. Yeah. And for the gluten-free, it's a really good book. So yeah. the problem is we don't have a market that's super focused on gluten-free mm -hmm. so that's the one that's probably likely yeah. to okay to take the so for sell. those of you asking i just looked up inventory we have 300 left of the volume one and we still have plenty of of gluten-free left okay you can go back sorry okay just so you guys know so uh so i don't know oh first of all did i mention lorraine said remember the clip at the dancing paper clip yes no. There was a paperclip in the book too. Oh yes, oh yes, and not just beans. I thought she oh, was talking about a commercial. Actually, she might be talking about a commercial now that I think about it. No, we didn't have a paperclip in the book. It was a carrot that was dancing. Oh, it was right. a carrot that was dancing. Right. Well, the website, so a lot of people are asking about how the packing is going. Uh, somebody asked earlier if we were if we were living out of boxes yet, and I mentioned that we're living out of all of our clothes are in suitcases now. <laughs> So I got rid of all the all the storage in the closets that wasn't attached, you know, like shoe racks and all that kind of stuff. So I put all of our clothes the in um, suitcases. We are living half out of boxes and half out of cabinets. I'm trying to keep the kitchen as much as possible because we're still doing videos to try and get ahead for when we're during we're moving. Um. We moved two weeks from today, and then the new house we're supposed to do two weeks from Friday. So we'll see. We, I have been packing and packing and packing every day. I have been packing as much as I can before I have to go do my brain zapping. And then um, <laughs> the boys now every day. We're doing a 15 to 30 minute hauling it out of the basement job. And they are hauling 15 to 20 loads out of the basement into the garage. As soon as Ellie gets moved out on Friday, then we're going to have more space in the garage because her couch won't be in there. So um, then we're going to try and see if we can get the entire basement emptied and up and out to the garage because Mike and the boys on a week from Friday are going to move all of mom's stuff into the van, into the moving truck. And then we're going to be real busy driving out to Kansas. So they're driving to Kansas. Well, yeah. So they're driving to Kansas, loading up and either coming back this, go driving to Kansas, spending the night, loading up the next day and either driving back that afternoon if they get done early or driving back on Sunday. Time to hang out with Uncle Dave. Well, maybe we'll see. We'll maybe have time to hang out with Uncle Dave. Oh. And then um, the boys want to play computer games with my brother. Um, and then Sunday they're going to drive home. And then Monday, Tuesday we're going to load up our moving trucks. So she's going to have a half a moving truck full. 
And then we're going to use that half and we've got another moving truck with a six by 12 towing behind it that we're going to put the books in whatever we have left. So that's why 60% off guys, 60% off whatever's left. It's either the end of the inventory. So while supplies last or July 11th, the morning of the 12th, I'm shipping all of the orders and that's it for two weeks minimum. We're not going to be shipping anything and we'll probably have some gluten free left, but I'm almost positive. We won't have any volume ones left. As and, a matter of fact, I know we won't have any volume. And ones at left, the time so. we will put a notice on our store saying yeah. from this moment until this moment, yeah. we're not planning to ship any. So that way you'll know yeah. if yours is, you, you won't be surprised that it's not being shipped. Like if you yeah. you'll see the notice and so, yeah. so, so, but between now and then. Yeah. So today I shipped the last of the soap orders. We have closed down the soap store indefinitely. I'm thinking maybe October is when I'm going to get that up and going again. It's going to, we're going to see how long it takes us to get the new studio. Oh, guys, I thought I found a treasure today. <clears throat> I'm looking for a vintage stove for the new studio. And there was one here in a town nearby, and it was $250. And I was like, ah, it's not worth hauling all the way up there for $250. But then last night it was free. So today I ran over there, and I had a hard time saying no, but I did say no. Yeah, but it was here. a really nice 1950s stove with four burners and on the side where you can put your cookie sheets and stuff. I want that for my kitchen. So, Marissa, we do ship to Australia, but the post office charges a lot of money to ship $70. to Australia. Yeah. So It's a five-pound book. So even though we do ship it yeah. there, not many people buy them because the shipping is really pricey. Yeah, it's $70. It's $50 to Canada. That's I don't make money on the shipping. That's just what the post office charges me. So Which everybody crazy, who's getting but... all mad at me for charging so much shipping, I'm not charging that shipping. That's only what the post office charges me. So, but it's a five pound book. So that's why. Um, Danny, Danny and Sharon said, Michael need a chiropractor. Last time he's tore his a a t ligament in his ankle. Had out yeah. surgery three years later. <laughs> so, uh, see, I didn't. I don't know. Is it tacky to wear the same dress for different special occasions? I don't have a big wardrobe of dresses and would love to wear it for a wedding this weekend. Should I care what people think? No. Not only should you not care, but you almost be everyone proud is going to be. Not only should you not care, but everyone is going to be so concerned about what other people think about what they're wearing. They probably won't even notice that you've worn it before. Okay, put this in perspective. No, seriously, put this in perspective. See, people don't think these things through. So all these people are going in out, going out and spending anywhere from fifty to three hundred dollars on a new dress that they will wear anywhere from one to ten hours, depending on how long the party is for the wedding. But even if it's one to ten hours, you're going to spend all that money on a dress just to impress people that you're only going to wear once for a few hours, not worth it at all. I would say be proud of yourself for wearing the same dress because you're the one not going into debt while everyone else is in hock up to their eyeballs. So I would be proud of myself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the only thing I would say is maybe if you have like, two kids getting married the same year or something. I don't know. But even then, if you don't have the money, I wouldn't worry about it. I would have thought nothing of my mom wearing the same wedding dress to my brother. My brother and I were married within six months of each other, uh, four months, four months of each other. And so I would have thought nothing if she wore the same dress. So yeah. Yeah. It's just funny that the truth is most people wouldn't even notice. Yeah. If somebody yeah. does notice and they call you out on it, they have their special kind of problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're the ones with the problem, yeah. not you. You're the one who's using your brain. So yeah. I would not worry about so it. Definitely wear it. Wear it proud. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I think we're going to like it in Wyoming. Um, 
I think we're going to like it. Um, we're getting excited. Yeah. It's going to be a mile to everything that we need. Our house is going to be a mile to everything that we need. And I don't know. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm not going to tell you guys anymore because I don't want you to, to figure it out beforehand, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. So <laughs> did you see about the 1946 stove? Yeah, I saw that. Under the media entire, I have a 1946 magic chef wow. stove that I use every day. It has the side storage for pans. This was nice. It had two warming drawers and then a drawer for, a, or no, one warming drawer, two storage drawers, and then the oven. I told mom it had a double oven. I was incorrect. It was storage drawers and a warming oven. But, and it was rusted on the drawers, but it wasn't anything bad. It wasn't rusted through, so I could have just lined it with something, uh, you know, an oven liner. But I couldn't see, there was no electrical coming out the back. There was no plug. So I was like, uh, I don't know. It's free. And if we were staying here, I would have taken the chance. But to haul it all the way up to Wyoming, uh, I'm not sure that was quite worth it. So, yeah, somebody was earlier was saying, you know, as you're getting rid of things, did you just buy chairs too? I know. <laughs> I know. But the thing is, here's the problem that I'm having. Where we are moving, they have thrift stores, but they are very tiny compared to what we have here. And I mean, we're talking minuscule compared to what we have here. Our thrift stores here are like Walmarts. Colorado has great thrift stores, but where we're going, it's minuscule compared to what we have here. I'm not complaining. I'm okay with that. But some things like when I found the kitchen chairs and I just loved them for $8 a chair, that's worth hauling up there. So, you know, that's kind of where, that's why with the couch, I'm like, oh man, I really love that new charcoal couch. It's and Mike will tell you, I don't go around just buying new furniture all the time. No. Well, I've never bought new furniture until this house. She's never bought new furniture. Yeah. There have been Even times our couches where, and mattresses. There have been times where we move into a house and she would buy something at a thrift store, like a couch at a thrift store, and it wasn't working out too well. And so maybe we might, she might buy three or four of them in a, in a year or two. Yeah. We move them in and out. But those were thrift store ones. So, and typically, if it didn't work out, she would sell it for more than she bought it. <laughs> well, and that's another thing. Half the stuff that I sold on Facebook Marketplace, I made more than double my money on what I paid for it. Or even some things I made triple and quadruple my money. So like my little bistro set, I paid $20 for that and I sold it for $125. I got my other patio set for free and I sold it for $150. <laughs> so I mean, 150% return on your money is pretty darn tootin' good, even if I do say so myself. And you know what? Maybe I should just buy that couch with all of the stuff that I've sold. I sold $3,000 worth of stuff. That's pretty good. Yep. So maybe I should sell the couch money. and get me a new one. So Maria is wondering because she bought the this ebook collection. I think the um, pretty much the the big ebook collection is everything except what's in the planner set, right? Yeah. Because she was asking about the crock pot, but I think that isn't the crock pot already in that? The crock pot should be in it. I think that's the crock pot right yeah, there. Yeah, I think the crock pot ebooks are already in that big collection. Yeah. So if you have that big collection, I think, so. I think the only thing you don't have is the planner, planner set. set. And gluten-free. We sort of separated those two. Yeah. Oh yeah, gluten-free. Planner set and gluten-free. Gluten-free is kind of its own thing. So we just it's not yeah. in any set. Yeah. So um, you know, now that I think about it, and we have been married 27 years this year, right? Is that right? Yep. That explains a lot. I um, know, but I'll keep you anyway. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, why you get so... I have to beat her to the punch, Dave. <laughs> yeah. um, now that I think about it, I have only spent in our entire 27 years of marriage on brand new furniture, I haven't even spent $5,000. I've probably spent around, 
probably about three to four thousand dollars is all we've ever spent on brand new furniture. Pat, the stove is a business expense. It would be for yeah. sure. Mainly, we were just trying to decide if it's worth buying it and then moving it. it up there. So it's the moving it up there that's an issue, and it's pretty heavy. I I could lift it like one side, so it would probably take three people to lift it. It's not cast iron, but it's. Yeah. Kara says, if Mike didn't say anything about those chairs, he's a keeper. You didn't. I didn't. You were great. I just You're say, always great, though. You never holler at me at stuff that I buy, usually. Wow. I appreciate the testimony. You don't. You're very, <laughs> I, you're very good. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't go around just... I was just, thinking that was at the same time for Mike. <laughs> no. But at the same time, I don't just go around buying all kinds of new stuff all the time, either. So, I mean... You know, a lot of husbands get mad at their wives, but they have good reason to be mad at their wives because their wives are going around spending money like crazy. Yeah. So Paula said she bought the gluten-free book and she just can't wait to try gluten-free bread ah. out of the cookbook. Actually, it's one of the most popular recipes in the book, right? The bread? Yeah. Oh, the sandwich bread. Oh my goodness. I have to get a video done. I know I've been saying I'm going to do that for six months, but... The sandwich bread is delicious. It only costs about a dollar to a dollar fifty, depending on how much the supplies are where you are. Compared to five to seven dollars a loaf at the store, it's worth it, and it's super easy. Now, here's the thing on the gluten-free sandwich bread: once you figure it out, it's super super easy. But like me, we're high altitude. I kept having problems, and I'm like, what is going on? So then I had my assistants who live, live um, like normal people, <laughs> sea level, whatever. Um, and it worked just fine. And then I, I realized I had to make a high altitude ver version and a sea level version. So that's where I was going wrong. But um, once I figured that out, I make it, my kids will devour that bread before it's even cool. They absolutely love it, and they don't have to be gluten-free. Well, you so, saw the hands yeah. come in just now. It's the same thing with that bread. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Sharon said, when I was young, I fantasized about what I could get. And now I fantasize about what I can get rid of. Oh, uh, we have been dumping it. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty proud of us. We've been doing good. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing actually pretty good. I'm, I'm having hope it's going to get on the truck. My only thing that I'm questioning right now is I have a lot of shelving that I really, really use right now. But the new house has unbelievable storage. The new house has absolutely unbelievable storage. And so I'm not sure if I'm going to need it at the house, but here's where the kick is. I think I might need it in the big garage slash warehouse dash studio i think i might need it in there because even though that has shelving it's not real usable shelving so i have several pieces of shelving that i'm thinking of bringing but i don't know if i should bring it and so i'm kind of stuck on the shelving at the moment t and rosa says oh that gluten-free sandwich bread is so good just bought two copies of gluten-free for gifts plus volume one 60 percent off oh, thank you and thank I'm, you. I'm glad you liked it so much that you bought more for gifts yeah because <laughs> that really so much. that really speaks to how much you liked it if you think yeah. somebody else might want it too so that's really great uh somebody asked if we have a sugar cream pie recipe and i sure do not don't, but do you know what that is no i've never heard of it um just one sec dave are there boxes on the stairs can you bring them up if there are yeah. Um, I have never heard of sugar cream pie. That sounds yummy. <laughs> oh my, I can't imagine that, how delicious that would be. Yeah. Um, we, somebody asked a question and what was it? Where, uh, where, uh, oh, we have lived here 10 years. Whoever right. asked that actually just, just last month, it was 10 years. So yeah, Wasn't it, there was some day we were signing papers or something and we said, this is the 10th anniversary of yeah. the day. Mike yeah. fell off the moving truck. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. Yes, because we all want to celebrate that. Wow. Oh, let's see. I forgot. I don't know if. I don't know if. He's... Uh, Jonathan says that if Kara lived nearby, he has a dehumidifier. He would get rid of Jonathan. You live in Florida. You need a dehumidifier. 
<laughs> then you you it. wouldn't have to pay for water at your house. Yeah. <laughs> will we have to here. deal with snow where we're moving? Yes. We will have to get a snow blower. We were and our yeah. driveway is big enough. We yeah. might yeah. have to get an ATV with a snow plow. I don't know. We'll see I how that goes. I'm not, I don't mind. You want an ATV. We're currently right. in northern Colorado. Oh, yeah. you need a four-wheel drive? And here in northern Colorado, it doesn't really snow that much. Yeah. But there are one or two snowstorms a year where it's we were bad. thinking, wow, we really probably yeah. should, it would be better if we had a snow blower. But we hate to have one for just two snowfalls, even though it's a big pain to, to shovel it then. Although here, there's a neighbor who loves to come out and work on everything. And then he's kind enough to say, here, take my snow blower and do yeah. your driveway. I'm like, okay. Yes. But are the PDFs on sale as well? Yes, they are. They are. Yes, all our eBooks are on sale. And they're between 50 and 75%. Some are 50, some are 75. So, so but we, the print books are 60 now. That are yeah. Left. So we put all the eBooks on sale because we wanted to have as big of a down payment for the next house as possible is why we just slashed prices on everything so that we could get as small of a mortgage as possible. So, <laughs> and you know, I mean, we really didn't want a mortgage, but to rent a warehouse here in Colorado, it would have cost the same as what our mortgage will be. So, you know, that's how we're justifying it. <laughs> well, and it will really- Dave Ramsey wouldn't approve, but- It hey. will really make our business much easier to operate yeah and much less much stressful. more pleasant to deal with yeah i mean right now it's really yeah i mean jennifer's right we've worked years and years and years and have sacrificed for years and years and so you know i mean i'll tell you the place that we're getting is not cheap prices are expensive and i quite frankly i would have never dreamed that i would be i'd never even six months ago would have been on my radar to buy a house with that dollar amount. But I we talked been, into it. He he did actually. He's I said you spent five years looking for a house. Maybe we just need to spend a little bit more <laughs> and then we'll know we get the right thing yeah. without having to get because what we what we've done, not so much with houses, but sometimes with equipment for the business or something is we'll tend to think, wow, could we do with the less one? And it's good to ask those questions when you spend money, especially when it's just on through through things. But but sometimes we've spent just slightly less than we should have and gotten the one camera below the one that we actually needed. And then we struggle and suffer with it. And we've kind of had that issue occasionally. Well, this house was sort of a compromise like that. And it has yeah. and it's it's been it's been a blessing that we have a house, but stressful in the fact that it, this house isn't really suitable for having a business in also. Well, and when we bought this house, we didn't have YouTube. We weren't doing YouTube. We weren't doing live shows. We didn't have the inventory we have now. And so none of that. And somebody we, asked. We thought we could get the inventory in one bay of the garage yeah. easily. And now the inventory literally takes up the entire garage and overflows onto the front porch so that we have to have a sale when books are coming so that we can literally slap uh, shipping labels on them because we don't have room in the garage. So literally now when it, when a new um, shipment comes in, we have a sale so that we can slap labels on them in the driveway or the front porch and then take them directly the same day to the post office because we just don't have space in the garage anymore when we get the big shipments. So. Do we have a dollar amount we won't spend without talking with the other? We actually haven't defined a dollar amount. But no, but we always do. I mean, we, here's we, the thing. Well, we ask each other about big things. Like if it's, well, usually if it's. We respect each other enough that we don't just go out and buy things without telling the other person. Like I don't just go out and buy $150 purses. Mike doesn't just go out and buy ATVs and motorcycles. <clears throat> You know, I've never just gone and bought a car without telling her. Yeah. Like I've heard some people do. I think, wow. We would never do that because we, and that's a marriage problem. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with the fact that you don't love and respect each other enough 
that you're not going to put your whole entire family in financial ruin with your spending. You know, I mean, I know people who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars without their spouses knowing, and it's just completely ruined their family because they're just disrespectful of each other. And that's not a good marriage. And Christians do this. That's what's even more disgusting is when Christians do that kind of thing. You know, you need to step up and have a little self-respect enough to respect the other person and expect self-respect and expect return and have enough spell have enough self-respect to expect self-respect in or to expect respect in return to expect respect in return. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was complicated. I'm... You should have enough self-respect <laughs> to expect respect from your spouse. All right. And it should go both ways. <laughs> um, so basically, we, we used to consult each other about even smaller amounts when we were super on the edge all the time yeah. financially. When we were making $6 an hour, we but didn't go buy Cheerios without. Now, it's not uncommon for us to spend $50 on something. And I mean, we don't hide it from the other one and it's not usually a toy. It's usually something that's gonna yeah. make the business like the chairs. better or the life. Or, yeah, yeah, the chairs. Uh, or we bought, we've been driving a lot and we're in the midst of this um, YouTube. They don't like us to call it a class. It's a YouTube experience. <laughs> it's a YouTube system. It's a tribe. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, um, a system. Yeah. And we've been trying to watch them on the road and we can't because they're not loud enough. So we bought this little speaker thing that we can. It was 80 bucks and it was really expensive, but. <laughs> but we can run it straight from the computer and then here in the whole car. So we're working while we're driving every, you know, we're driving up to Fort Collins together three times a week and for four weeks. Well, that $80 we spent on that speaker is crazy expensive for a little tiny speaker, but. It's really helpful. We'll make way more than $80 in the what? two times 12 in the 24 hours that we're driving back and forth by listening to this class. And so, well, and we've come, yeah. I think we've also come to realize we, we understand what each other thinks about money. Yeah. So, so we know like if it's a larger amount, then we'll talk to each other about that. Like yeah. if it was a thousand dollars or something, then we would definitely say something mm -hmm. to each other. And so it just kind of depends on the thing, but for particularly for business things, we almost have the same mind as to yeah. what's worth spending in the business. So that works pretty well. It's mm -hmm. mostly things that aren't the thing with the business is we understand certain things we pay for them. And then there's a much larger return than the cost of that mm -hmm. because of how it makes our business more efficient. Yeah. So, but when it's a personal thing, like just to do that, then we tend to. Now, one time I did spend four hundred dollars on a big screen TV <laughs> for a Christmas present for Mike. It's something oh. he's always wanted, oh. and um, we've never had one. We never, never had one, and it was on a Black Friday special. So I did buy him a black, a big, a big screen TV for four hundred dollars that I didn't tell him about, but. She knew I wasn't going to complain. This was after our house was totally paid off. We were totally debt free. We were doing really well financially. So I knew we had the money. So that's why I didn't hesitate. You know, are car tags cheaper where we're going? I don't know, but I it's know, likely probably. it's likely that they are. Wyoming's great on the taxes. There's no <clears throat> income tax. There's no sales tax on groceries. Our car insurance is lower. Our house insurance is lower. Um, well, even though we're getting a more expensive house, comparatively, it's lower. Um, what else? Gas is lower there. Well, yeah, I mean, compared so to the rest of the country. For so. us, the property tax will be higher, but it's because it's a much bigger property. Yeah. I think if it was the same size property. Well, but see, 
we're paying the same amount on, okay, so the property tax on the new house in Colorado would have been um, another $1,000 more. So for the same <clears throat> amount, because I've been looking, because because that's a factor for us, because we intend on getting it paid off really quick, like in a year or two or less. Um, and so that's a factor for us. So I've been watching property taxes and no, this is not my dream home. This is not what I would think of my forever home. I compromised a lot of things on this house. On the new one? Yeah. But it has a lot of things that are really, really nice that we really like. So we could end up staying here until we're dead. So, I mean, I, I, I would be okay staying here until we're dead. Was it my dream home? No. I well, really wanted to live out in the country. That was like major for me. But... There's an area out in the country where the houses are kind of on more sprawling estates and super quiet. And I think that's kind of what Tara had in mind. Mm -hmm. But I, this one, I, I would like to say it would be great if we never had to move again. Yeah. Uh, and, and we might not. Sharon asked, will Wyoming be your forever home? We hope so. I probably. Because <laughs> it'd be great to not move again. Um, and some things about this house, I told Tara, you know, I think we may get into it and discover that this is kind of what we need more than what we thought. Yeah. Although in, in the future, it's always possible to move out to one of those estate areas if we had enough money. For well, that. and with the business, <clears throat> what we need has to trump what we want. Because what I want does not have internet good enough for our business and we still have to work we don't have enough retirement saved up yet or anything like that so if we get to that point and we have our retirement saved up and all that i'm like well you know what maybe we could get just like a little vacation house out in the country that might be possible why not you know so maybe we could find one closer to yellowstone or something that that might be work for us so then i could have my little country house and just get something tiny, like a cabin or something that's just like 800 square feet or not something huge. But, um, you know. I like the cabin you stayed in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, up in Evergreen. Yeah. So that Jean, thank you, Jean. I loved it up there. She, she texted me the other day and said she opened it. Um, but uh, so, you know, it's not my dream house, but it's really nice. And it's got a lot of things like a mud room and a jetted tub and a huge warehouse and a good living room and a nice big yard so I can have my gardens. So, I mean, it's got a lot of things on the list. So, yeah, I mean, I don't plan on going anywhere soon. And it's in town, so we have really good internet and it's close to the grocery store. There are a lot of things about it that I think we may appreciate more than when we imagined what we thought we wanted, I think some of it is yeah. potentially going to be better than that for yeah. us, but we didn't anticipate that. So. Yeah. Any churches? So we, fortunately, in all the trips that we've been up there, we have not been able to try any churches. There's about, there's a few, I'm not going to say how many, but there's a few that are contenders. So hopefully, but I'll be honest, we have been looking for a good church for the 27 years we've been married. I can't honestly say we've been to one church that was just really, really good in the 27 years that we've been married. But I grew up in a church that even though after my dad left, it was really bad, they did have a pastor there for a while that was really good. And even as a 10 year old kid, I listened to this pastor. He was so good. And then he ended up being a missionary and left that church and that's kind of when things went downhill but um i've never i'm picky with my churches i want a church that's like david jeremiah or charles stanley or um you know pastor jack hibbs or pastor james any pastor brian any of them those guys are good preachers and so it's really hard to find a church nowadays, I'll be honest, but we're going to look and we're going to try and we'll probably, even if it's not 
a terrific church. We'll probably end up going just so that we have, you know, a church to go to. But I'll be honest, for years and years, we've come home and I've watched pastors on the internet because you just don't get good preaching. Now, right now we have a church that we're going to that we just started going to a couple months ago. Um, and the pastor's re he's a really good pastor. He has good preaching, but now we're leaving. So there is no HOA, uh, Catherine, thankfully. That was our number one requirement. I was not going to get an HOA again. Yeah. Nope, <clears throat> nope, 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 nope. Uh, on the churches, the main thing that we were thinking is we have sometimes done church at home in an online format when we were between churches, but it's we prefer to go in person to a church, but the main, the main positive thing about going in person is having that fellowship with people and ideally seeing them outside of the five minutes that you see them at church. And what we've found is a lot of the churches where we've gone, everyone seems to be too busy to get together and do things mm -hmm. with people that aren't already in their group. Yeah. So that's the one thing that we've struggled with most on that really yeah and but we're still optimistic just so people understand we're not looking for a church that is relevant that we like and all that we are looking for a church that preaches the bible and does the things that the bible says and so sometimes though you if you're if you're going to a church and you don't ever feel uncomfortable with what they're preaching then you maybe need to find another church because those pastors should be preaching on sin and how to help overcome it. And if a pastor is always talking about the flowers and the butterflies, but they're never hitting you between the eyes about the sin that you're committing and how you need to get that straightened out in your life, then you know, you need to find a better church. So, Oh, Maria, I love Charles Stanley too. He's my absolute favorite. Yeah. And he's good. And she says she also likes David Jeremiah. He's good too. One thing on the church thing is uh, if we have trouble, there is a town not that far away that has a church that I'm fairly confident we would like. Yeah, it's so, about a half an hour away, so that might work. So yeah. if if we struggle finding one in town, that, that would be an option too. Although... I'm cautiously optimistic that some of the options look good. So. Oh, Maria made the pizza from last week. She's, She's just, made it three times. <laughs> wow, three times in a week. Volume one, Dining Eye Dime, 60% off. We have gluten-free guys, my ad, 60% off. And our financial planners, 60% off. These are not gonna be reprinted, but everything else is gonna be reprinted around September. So if you guys need Christmas gifts, you need another muffin. This is all the muffins we have left, guys. So you can see that the breakfast puffs are popular around here. I haven't made them forever. Um, let's see. Yes, Tori, Jack Hibbs is amazing. We really like him a lot. Yes. As a pastor's wife, my perspective is it's not the preacher, it's the people that make the church. That's it's, true. It's kind of both. But if it's the, the pastor sure. isn't a good leader and a good Bible teacher, the pastor is the head of the church and it's his responsibility to be leading the church correctly. So it is, you're right. It is the people, yeah. but there's some ability to influence yeah. the people. As the head of the church, you're supposed to be the head of the church Where as the pastor. One circumstance that we had experience with, where it's true that the people were being that way, but the pastor was holding his punches in terms of the, he wasn't calling people to action. Yeah, he would tell them about the Bible, but he wouldn't ever say, "Now go do it." Mm -hmm. And I think it may not have changed all those people, but it might have influenced them to maybe be a little more likely to take action in that way. But I do understand people are lazy now. They don't want to volunteer to help out. But, you know, we went to this church for six years. We were involved a lot. We were involved a lot. We were gone for three months, and no one even noticed we were gone for three months. And it wasn't like we were just coming in and sitting down and leaving. We were very involved. 
And so I think that honestly, part of it is just American society today. And the pastors aren't standing up saying this is wrong. And it is. And um, that's partly like, that's partly why we're helping um, these churches in the Philippines with Bibles because they know what it means to really be a church and they are desperate to really get into the word of God. And so that's why we've been working and working to help get them Bibles over in the Philippines and India is because we know what it's, you know, we can see that they actually have a desire to follow what the Bible says and to live a, a life to where people can say, oh yeah, you're a Christian. So anyway, but all right, Mike, the HOA, the house we sold as part of the HOA, what did we dislike about the most? Oh my goodness, what didn't we dislike? Well, it, you know, it helps we, with property values. So we have not had a, like the HOA hasn't come down on us, but they're very uneven about how they enforce the rules. So certain rules they don't enforce at all, or maybe they enforce them on some people, but not on other That's people. That's the big thing for me. And some rules, a lot of rules went right out the window with COVID. And then after kind of everything calmed down, they still didn't start enforcing those rules again. Mm -hmm. So they they have all these rules and they're kind of highly bureaucratic and they they kind of pick at all kinds of little things, but they don't evenly enforce the rules. And so, to us, it seems like the HOA wasn't very valuable. So an example is basketball <clears throat> goals are not allowed on the street here or in front of your house. Basketball goals have to be stored in your garage, according the portable, to the like HOA. Portable ones. According to the HOA. But they leave basketball goals. Every other house has a basketball goal out in the street, out in their driveway, wherever. But when I called to complain about it, because then they were leaving hockey, hockey things, and they were leaving um, badminton stuff. And I mean, it was just ridiculous. So then when I called to complain and said, okay, is this a rule or is it not a rule? And, and the guy literally told me, well, we just can't enforce everything. Well, what am I paying you for then? Mm. I'm paying for you to enforce it because it keeps my property values high. And so they would enforce things like having Christmas lights in June. Like one house got lights that are permanently on their house. And so they were turning them on like on, well, it wasn't the 4th of July, but they turned them on like Easter and yeah. Valentine's Day and a few other days. And they were sending those people kind of nasty grams about it but the the hoa rules are also that you can't have an rv parked in front of your house but they just totally ignore that because people get angry if they get enforcement letters about it or they just pay the fines because the fines only 25 dollars, so they'll just pay the fines and just park and, it there and a lot of those things we don't really care about it's just the fact that they don't enforce them evenly on everybody yeah. in the same way and the thing with the basketball goals is <clears throat> after everything kind of relaxed we had two different neighbors park their basketball goals right in front of our house like in the street and, so we couldn't get out of our driveway and we were trying to kindly say hey you know could you move that over in front of your house and and they they, they were nice didn't understand why they were nice but they didn't do it <laughs> So, so I had to call the HOA and then the HOA was like, well, we can't enforce everything. Well, so we prefer not to have an HOA. The one thing that it might be good for is at our old house in Kansas, we lived out in the country with no HOA. And one house on the way to our house had stuff piled all the way out to the street, like broken down cars and dishwashers and stuff. We didn't really care. But when it was time to sell our house, all the buyers drove past that on the way. And I think it yeah. discouraged a lot of them. All right. What kind of so, dairy-free butter do I recommend? Um, the I can't believe it's not butter in the square tub is the cheapest one I have found, and it works really good. Michelle, what kind of yeast do I use for the pizza? You can use any yeast for the pizza. The fast rising just rises faster. The instant rise just rises faster than the active. So, Digging the Grind, we wouldn't have moved just because of the HOA. No. But it was certainly one of those kind of flies in the oil. It was one of those little irritations. 
the other thing is like the dog barking thing there's a city rule against that but the city refuses to enforce that so there's just it's just a lot of things I, my thinking is fine if you don't want to have a rule just don't make a rule and then not enforce it or yeah not enforce it um, <laughs> let's see Somebody says, I'm Catholic. I quit going to church when I was 18. Too many <clears throat> hypocrites. So much more. Okay, so one thing you have to realize with churches. Everybody's a hypocrite. <laughs> everybody's a hypocrite because everybody's a sinner. Okay? The problem comes in when churches do not follow the Bible and do not preach against the sin that is committed amongst people you're not perfect. Christians are never going to be perfect because they're all sinners. But what, as a Christian, what you do is when you have become a Christian, when you've accepted Christ as your savior, you have confessed your sin. You admit that he saved you from your sin by dying on the cross and rising again. When that happens, the Holy spirit lives in you and convicts you of your sin. And then you try better. Okay. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it means you try and you keep trying. Oh, Ellie got a watermelon. I've been dying for watermelon. Is it for your new apartment or is it for here? Oh, you got two watermelons. How did you get two watermelons? I bought them. You bought them? Oh, Ellie bought oh, watermelon. She you. loves her mom. Thank you. So the thing is, churches are not going to be perfect. And you're not going to find a perfect church. And I will tell you, really good churches are few and far between now. They really but, are because pastors are not standing up for what's right and what's in the Bible. But the Bible does say not to forsake the fellowship of believers. <clears throat> and I think it's important because God made us for relationships. And so it's important to have those kinds of relationships. How that happens, I, I'm not sure if one way is better than another way, but what I, I, I think generally we're, it, I think it's a good idea to go to church and be with other believers. The problem is so many churches are just not, they're not, they're aiming after the wrong things. And because of that, um, creates a lot of difficulty. And of course the people are, People are selfish and I, I'm not specific, not like those people are selfish or those people are selfish. All people are selfish, but Americans especially, I can say that being an American. And um, I think that makes it more difficult to have everyone together in a more cohesive kind of body. But we should be looking to be in the fellowship of other believers. Yeah. At the same time, we recognize that can be really difficult because we've had that trouble even when we're in a church where a lot of times it's not much different than if we were watching the church on the internet in terms of the way that it's hard to connect with people, even when you're volunteering a lot or are on staff. So. Well, and, and here's the thing. To find a good Bible-based church, there are several things that you can do. One, if they allow women to be pastors, that's not a Bible-based church. I'm sorry. You can get mad at me all you want, but the Bible is very specific that women should not be pastors, period. They can be Sunday school teachers. They can do, you know, help with things, but they are not to be pastors, period. Um, if the Bible is marrying um, people who are of the same gender, that is not Bible-based. If a church is um, marrying people who are divorced but have not had an affair, that's not biblical either. The only way you can get remarried, according to the Bible, is if you've been divorced, is if your spouse cheated on you. That's the only biblical way. Um, if churches are saying that you have to be a good person to go to heaven, that's not Bible-based. The only way you can go to heaven is to admit you're a sinner, believe Jesus died for your sins, confess your sins and admit that he is the Lord of your life and give your life to him. That's the only way 
You will never, ever, ever be good enough to go to heaven. Not one person on earth will ever be good enough to go to heaven. So those are some of the things that you can tell. That right there will eliminate 85, 90% of the churches out there. And so you can't just be baptized. You can't just take communion. You can't just be confirmed to go to heaven. You have to actually have a relationship with Christ. So that's the way. And if you guys need a Bible, <clears throat> we give Bibles for free. Jennifer, if you're a widow, then that rule is not. Yes. Or if your spouse dies. Yeah. yeah. If your spouse dies. I'm sorry. If you are a widow or widower, then you may get remarried. Yes. I, I'm sorry. Um, but if you need a Bible, please go to Living on a Dime. Go to the shop. We have free Bibles. If you can't afford one, we are happy to give you one. We only have about 20 or 30 left, and then we're going to not have any more until we get to the new house around the 1st of August or so. Um, but someone asked on the Philippines, yes, we were able to get one batch of Bibles to the church in the Philippines last week. There were two churches, one of them. But one we're still working on. One of them, the pastor out. was extremely helpful in helping me locate them. Yeah locate the Bibles and it was nice having somebody on the ground there. The other church is a lot bigger and <clears throat> so uh, I'm working with a student there and we're trying to still get that one worked out. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I, I'm optimistic. So yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We looked at trying to ship them from the U S though. And wow, it's like $300. Yeah. Shipping. <laughs> so we're thinking maybe not. So somebody, I didn't see the whole thing baptizing does not get you to heaven so just confessing that you are a sinner and that you're accepting christ as your savior gets you to heaven baptizing is when you make a public declaration of your faith in christ and that's when you are baptized being baptized as an infant is not going to get you to heaven you have to be of an age where you understand what it means to give your life to christ so um all right let's see um all right sorry I'm all right i think is that good yep okay 60 percent off guys living on a dime.com 60 percent off an hour ago we had 300 dining volume ones and a thousand gluten-free dairy-free and about 400 financial planners. I don't know how many we have now left. While supplies last 60% off or July 11th is our cutoff date. The truck is being packed on July 12th. So we will not be shipping after 10 a.m. July 12th. And um, let's see, anything else that we need to talk about? Next week so. is our last show. In this kitchen. Whoa. So it'll be interesting to see what the new wow. place looks like. Wow. It seems weird, doesn't it? John, you're so. right. It is all about Jesus. Yep. Yes. And if you guys need Bibles, livingonadime.com, go to the shop. We Actually, have them for free if you can't afford them. That is pretty brilliant. The church is a gathering of God's people, but the church is not about the people. Yeah. Yeah. Not about the pastor, not about the programs, not about Sunday school or the youth program. And that's the issue that's really difficult in America is... Yeah, it's really many churches. Most churches are focused more on how do you feel about church? What do you want? How can we make this better for you? Yeah, but um, we're not. We're supposed to be there to to worship God. Yeah, and have relationships with each other. So yep, yep. All right, these visit, visit us at livingonadime.com. We love you guys, and thank you so much, guys, for supporting and helping us. Uh, Maria, when we get moved, will we have volume, print volume two? We will, but not immediately after we get there. September Probably 1st. September. Yeah. Around September They're 1st. They're in the process of being printed right now. So anyway, yep. All right. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye. We appreciate you being here. Bye.